courage is fear plus action. This is Walking Your Talk, a personal development podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor, and I've been working with organizations on how to change their culture for over 30 years. But this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks your talk, then this podcast is for you. This is the first of a series of four podcasts that I'm making for you about courage. And I've chosen courage because, for me, courage is the way that you turn dreams into action. Often I'll have dreams that just feel a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And I know that if I had a little bit more courage, I would be able to fulfill them. And I'm sure you feel the same way too. Brené Brown has a great Netflix piece, which if you haven't heard, I would highly recommend where she says that sometimes companies ask her to come and talk about courage, but then they say, oh, but you mustn't use the word vulnerability because that's not really a very kind of corporate word. She, of course, absolutely refuses to work with under those circumstances, uh, saying that that restriction makes it impossible. Because in fact, when you explore the concept of courage, you have to touch into vulnerability. And that is an uncomfortable word for many of us. So when I explore with people this concept of courage being having fear and still acting, I realize how many people actually spend a lot of their life firmly inside of their comfort zone. Actually, then you're allowing the fear to win and you don't take action to do all those things that you wish you could do. Another thing I've noticed is that courage, a courageous act, is very different for one person than it is for another. So maybe, you know, we take the example of public speaking. For me, public speaking, I love it. It doesn't require courage at all for me. Put me in front of a group and I come alive. No notes, lots of questions, lots of interaction, lots of challenge. I'm in my element. But put me in front of this microphone, talking to you, the listener of my podcast, actually required much more courage for me because it's much more intimate. So it's just you and me, even though you're a long way away. And that intimacy is invokes more fear in me than standing in front of 500 people. For somebody else, it would be completely the reverse. So I think the first thing to notice about courage for you is that by definition, if you're not feeling afraid, then you're not outside of your comfort zone and nobody else can tell you what that means because your fears, your anxieties are different from mine. But what I can tell you is that your life becomes richer in every sense, if you are able to take that step. So let's examine for a moment how, if courage is fear plus action, how that actually works. So you're faced with a situation that makes you feel anxious or uncomfortable, which by the way are both less obvious forms of fear and often words people feel more comfortable. I know lots of people who say, oh no, 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 I never feel afraid. But my experience is that anxiety is kind of from the same base. Maybe you think about something that you know you ought to do, like having a difficult conversation with someone. You need to give them some feedback or, you know, you're faced with the opportunity to take a risk, take a risk with a client, perhaps ask for more money than you normally would or asking your boss to invest some money in a product or project that you really believe in. So I'm talking about day to day situations where you feel not, you know, there's massive kind of life or death fear, but the day-to-day situations where you can feel that little moment of anxiety and what do you choose to do? And that anxiety that you feel is actually completely normal. It's actually a surge of adrenaline in your body which fuels you to take action. So we're all hardwired to do that because if we're sitting in real danger, then our body gets this surge of adrenaline which tells us to flight or fight or whatever it is that we need to do. But there are many things in our life where we get that same level or that same surge of anxiety, where in fact, if we examine it more deeply, the danger is not as great as we think it might be. So the first step is actually to get better at recognizing when you get that surge of adrenaline, that anxiety. And most people feel it either in their throat or in their stomach. You can actually sort of feel it in your body. So observe that, welcome it, because that's your courage moment. 
and watch how your mind rationalizes why you shouldn't act. So that mechanism that was designed to stop you walking too close to the cliff edge so you won't fall off is now trying to prevent you from growing outside of your comfort zone and doing something, in fact, that would end up being really exciting for you. So I find that just recognizing what's going on makes a huge difference. My technique of avoiding is often procrastination. You are put off doing something that is not familiar. So in this series of four episodes about courage, I'm going to explore three different types of courage opportunities. The next episode is going to be about the courage to take risks and do new things where you might maybe fail. Then there's going to be another one about the courage it takes to be more vulnerable and share more of yourself in a more intimate way with what you're prepared to talk about with others and what you're prepared to say to them. And the third one is going to look at the whole courage that's involved in speaking up, holding true to your values, even when other people don't necessarily want to hear it. But to set you up for those three, what I want to do today is to start an exercise for this week that will actually give you the chance to observe yourself and to start spotting those moments when you feel the reflex rise in you in your throat, in your stomach, wherever you feel it. And notice what is causing it. And actually rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of how strong that fear impulse is and what it does. What your mind does, whether it stops you from acting, whether you still act. Just observe it as if you were watching a movie about this situation. And then as if you had one of those kind of sliding dials that you have on a dimmer switch, just play with turning it up or down. So imagine what you would need to do to increase that level of fear and anxiety. What would be a 10? So if you were thinking about taking a risk at work by saying something you wouldn't normally say or asking for approval for a project you wouldn't normally do, you know, maybe a 10 would be going right to the, your boss's boss and, you know, pitching something really big. What would be a 10? Maybe a 10 would be talking to the person who you find it most difficult to communicate with and having a really honest conversation. So think about that and also play with what would it take to decrease the dial? What would make it less fearful? So at this point, we're just playing around. We're just making this as if it's a little bit of a game and maybe note down some of those thoughts, some of those insights, some of the incidences that happened. Because what I'm doing here is I want to play with detaching you from that courage equals fear plus action. I feel fear and you know either I jump or I don't jump or whatever, so that you start to witness yourself feeling it because the detachment in itself actually tends to lower the fear levels, because as you step back and look at this as a movie, you go, actually, this isn't so fearful. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes you remain fearful. Maybe you should remain fearful, but you notice something different when you start to observe it. So by doing that, you're on your way to start becoming more courageous, because what happens next is that the, the, the secret to courage is that it's not that you have to get rid of the fear it's that you have to learn to take action and feel the fear. That's the, People think, oh, I've got to just kill the fear. No, no, no. If you're not feeling any fear, you're probably not stretching yourself enough, in fact. You know, if you're living a life where you never feel fear, I would say, man, you're probably right dead in the middle of your comfort zone. So that's worth thinking about as well. So next week, what we'll do, as I said, we will look in more depth about what does it actually mean to take action while you are still feeling fear? And how much more will that allow you to accomplish? So thank you for joining me. And please come in next week and we will take it to another level on courage.